This is the nation's top-selling video game. And millions of kids are mastering it by learning to slaughter bystanders. We can't say for certain whether Grand Theft Auto 4 is going to be the biggest selling game of 2008, but it's certainly going to be one of the biggest, with 6 million copies expected to move in the first week and 9 million by the end of the year. Never has there been an opening like this in the entertainment industry. This week, Grand Theft Auto 5 pulled in $1 billion in sales in three days. No movie or music release has ever come close to that. And with, as with earlier versions of the game, it is extremely violent. You know, I need some remedial training here. I just need to know about the, the franchise in general. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to tell you. So, are, are the, the thieves the protagonists, or are we trying to catch the thieves as... The thieves? You play as the thieves. You're a thief. You're a thief and a killer and a murderer. Yeah. We live in a society... I understand that those words are essentially just a meme at this point, but you know what though? Sometimes we really do live in a society, especially when it comes to people having opinions on Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto might be the single most influential game franchise in history. Sure, Minecraft has sold a whole lot more, but I'm not confident enough to say that Minecraft has a more lasting cultural footprint in the world of entertainment than the GTA franchise which is a unique outlier for how popular it is in the AAA blockbuster gaming market. GTA is the top dog of AAA. Whether you love another game more or even think something else is 10 times better than any single GTA game you've ever played, you cannot honestly sit here and tell me there is another dog atop the hill, crowned king of the AAA space, no matter how much you try. If GTA were a villain to the rest of the industry, it would be as inevitable as Thanos when he snaps his fingers. But like the inevitability of Thanos and GTA, there is also the inevitability of the world around it collapsing upon itself with absolute resolve to use GTA as a punching bag for whatever idea, outlook, perspective, problem, or cultural stance the individuals, outsiders, and media want to die on the hill for. It's that time of the decade again. It's time for GTA to be the reason for violence in the streets, the reason why you should vote for this person instead of that person, the reason why some random dude hurt some other person's feelings, the reason why the youth has lost its way, again, the reason why the news has nothing better to talk about than video games they have historically proven to know nothing about every time they speak on them. If GTA were the attraction, causing crowds to form, the discussion around it would be the circus, trying to profit off that attraction. Enter GTA 6. It actually happened, folks. Grand Theft Auto 6 has been revealed and will be releasing sometime in the year 2025. At least, until it gets delayed one or maybe two more times. All jokes aside, it's safe to say the anticipation was always going to be at unearthly levels. However, the extent to which the stratosphere has been breached with the hyperspace hype train after that reveal is truly something only a GTA game could do. It's Grand Theft Auto's throne for a reason, boys and girls. Grand Theft Auto is known for its great and immersive open worlds and its sprawling narrative sagas, but the franchise is also known for the zany and over-the-top caricatures of real-life stereotypes and cultural elements which have helped define each title by giving them a unique flair unto themselves. The marketing team has essentially made a point that life is truly stranger than fiction now, as all the zaniness showed off in the first 90 seconds of GTA 6 were in fact parodies of real-life craziness. I can already see a launch day full of Florida Man memes on the horizon. Here we are in the world of 2023, looking ahead to 2024, and life as we know it has caught up to the wildness of Grand Theft Auto. Funny how that works, right? Massive kudos to the marketing folks at Take-Two and Rockstar for putting that together, or whoever was hired to construct the trailer. As we look into the little pieces of information we can glean from the reveal, we can look past the hysteria shown off and appreciate what kind of story the game appears to be presenting. Lucia is certainly being promoted front and center, but it does appear as though there will be an element of some sort of modern-day Bonnie and Clyde action going on. We see Lucia, along with her partner in crime, are featured prominently in the trailer as well as gracing the key art with their presence. Couple those facts with the not-so-subtle use of a song called Love is a Long Road by Tom Petty, and you can pretty much get the sense that Rockstar is trying to go a different route with this one. 
the whole two playable leads experience wouldn't even be a new thing as the previous title GTA V featured three playable characters across the single player story. What we don't know is the context for how the characters will be sharing the spotlight as co-leads or even if they'll have equal time to shine so to speak. Nevertheless, that's a concern for another day. As we all know, it's going to be a long wait before we get any more news from GTA 6. In fact, the earliest I would expect to hear anything else from the game might, the operative word here is might, be at the PlayStation Showcase next summer, as they are rumored to have marketing rights with Rockstar. In between now and then, and probably even after that, up until release, there will be a constant bickering and debate about the kind of messaging within GTA 6 and what it will or won't comment on as a mega title in the gaming industry. On one side, we'll have the people screaming about GTA's level of violence and treatment of women, while on the other side of the discussion, we'll have people spend 18 bazillion months trying to figure out if one word here or there in the marketing or the game itself makes this GTA game woke. If the male protagonist ends up getting too much time showcased in future trailers or marketing, we'll hear about how Rockstar is afraid to have a female lead a game in the franchise. Yet, at the same time, we have a trailer like the one that's already out, and I'm sure it's only a matter of time before we'll hear complaints that the main female character is too sexualized or how this trailer shows the game was made by a misogynist. What I'm alluding to here is that literally, no matter what happens with GTA 6 now or in the future, people on the outside looking in who don't actually play or even care about it, will complain about something and point to GTA 6 as an example of why video games are bad for X, Y, or Z reason. The gaming industry will be subjected to yet another round of discussion concerning how GTA is supposedly corrupting young hearts and minds and leading them into a life of crime. The honest truth is that GTA is something completely different from anything else in the history of interactive video entertainment. What GTA is to millions upon millions of people is an escapist get away from their day-to-day -day problems and life's many oddities, while at the same time becoming a parody of those struggles and all those oddities. It's a game that shows us it's okay to laugh at the imperfections and obvious absurdity that we see in our own lives and from the environment around us. Look no further than the reveal trailer and tell me I'm wrong. GTA might be called a Grand Theft Auto, but the majority of what makes the franchise so popular has very little to do with cars. For each gamer, they can step into a world which looks and even acts a little like their own. But here in Grand Theft Auto, when the game world pushes at you, the player can push back. They don't have to just sit there and take it. They can embrace the absurdness with bizarre chaotic results. Grand Theft Auto's popularity is not surprising to someone like me as I view its constant growth and success as a reinforcement of a pretty simple rule of life. Humanity in general doesn't like authority or answering to it. We all, ever since our childhood, have found ways to rebel against something, even if it means fighting the alarm clock to get out of bed on time for school or work. In the world of GTA, you don't have to follow the rules because you can make your own. And what the heck, if it raises your wanted level, then at least you'll get a chance to feel what it's like to be in a hot speed pursuit with a red and blue light flashing in your rearview mirror. It's a gaming tradition where gamers of the world unite in throwing a middle finger to the rules, letting loose to have pure, unadulterated, chaotic fun, if even for only a few hours each week to remind us it's okay to laugh, have fun, and forget about the stress of work or school or even family stuff in this great big crazy thing, which is the beautiful absurdity of life itself. So the next inevitable time someone points to or blames GTA for some random issue or one of the world's recurring problems on the news or on YouTube or even social media, just remember, we live in a society and society can sometimes suck. That doesn't mean we have to let it ruin the fun and everything. So when they try to use GTA 6 as the next punching bag to go attack gaming, we can always ignore it and jump into an open world where we just yank a dude out of a truck and go 100 on a thoroughfare while listening to Kenny Loggins talk about rock and roll on a fake radio station. Because why not? After all, we're just here to play games and have fun. And at the end of the day, that's what GTA and gaming is all about. Having fun playing a story or online with friends while making up your own rules as you go. Maybe for starters, we should all go meet up with Roman for some bowling before booking our ticket to Vice City in 2025 or possibly later. We'll see about that.
At this time, I want to thank you for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, clicking that like button, and hitting that little bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any new videos as soon as they drop. Thanks again, I really appreciate it, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day. These games, but the, the large majority of these people so, are, are young So why men. do they do it? I mean, the, the violence against women act of it. You know, I, their defense of it is it's crime fiction. Uh, it is not, you know, that different from uh, what you see in Scarface or something okay, but, of but that But if it kind. was not there, would it limit the number of sales of Grand Theft Auto V?